All right, folks, remember jackets, shoes, hats, hairnets. Let's get ahead and get on that. All right. Culinary arts teacher Ben Howell doesn't want any loafing in his kitchen. Wash your hands. Get on task, please. And this morning, his students are on a roll, rolling up their sleeves. Press it out. Get a nice even line of it. And rolling out dough for the entire school. Last week, I was hit with my distributor of having no hamburger buns whatsoever. That's when the students decided to rise to the occasion. No one wants a slice of bread on their hamburger. <laughs> After consultation with my class and telling them what the situation was, what was going on, they agreed unanimously to take it on. Well, it, it was quite amazing. That looks nice. That's a lot better than that other one. Thank you. It's a lesson plan that goes against the grain. You're going to tuck it under and, and turn it. He didn't say we're doing this. He told them the situation and what we were dealing with and asked their thoughts on it. We've got three different things going on back there. One group divides the dough and rolls it. Another makes dough for tomorrow and another measures out ingredients for later. The water and the yeast and the salt first and then once that's mixed up we add in the flour and then we mix that up and it creates dough. I couldn't be any more proud of these students. It makes me so happy to see them take ownership of this because this was their choice. Call this lesson a need to know. A nice mix of where learning meets real life. The way I try to approach things is to teach them some life skills that's going to make them a good solid employee. 23 minutes to beat your time from yesterday. A good representative of Louisa County Public Schools regardless of what industry they go into. It's a bread winner that's building better minds. Bravery has been the prominent characteristic of my generation. We take action when it needs to be taken. On this beautiful day in Hopewell, the spoken word of a poet echoes across the water. My generation is trying to undo all the institutionalized and systematic oppression left to pick up the pieces and teach the ignorance the lessons. Generations, um, it came about to me when I was writing an essay for a scholarship, and basically it asked me, uh, how has your generation influenced your future in unforeseen ways? Our winner of the Virginia Poetry Out Loud Finals. She needed that inspiration. Representing Hopewell High School, Ajane Pollard. Entering the 2021 Poetry Ourselves competition. But I'm so proud of you, baby. I am. Thanks. I'm so proud of you. You did so well. Thank you. Hugs can be better than awards sometimes. Thank you. Especially from proud mothers. The more words a person knows to describe her private sufferings. But it's poetry that helps Ajane spread her wings. Writing started for me as a coping mechanism. You know, I was in a dark place and I needed to get my feelings out and I needed to find a way to speak about those things. And she was inspired to help others after an open mic night. Her spoken word poem then was about overcoming body image issues. I had a woman come up to me afterwards and she was sobbing, like she was just full on crying to me and she was like, I had never heard anyone say anything like that out loud before and it just was a beautiful thing to have somebody say exactly what I feel in that kind of manner. Awards are fine, but the rewards of the spoken word can be even better. We don't have all the answers to change the world. Building confidence. But we'll figure out how. And building better minds. Before we start up the bus each morning, we do what's called a pre-inspection. Michael Mason will tell you, if you're going to do something, do it right. The thing that we want to primarily assure is that every kid is going to be safe on this bus. Maybe it's a lesson he learned as a Marine Corps officer. I'm checking wiring. I want to make sure nothing's frayed, nothing's pulled apart. Or maybe lessons learned during his time as executive assistant director of the FBI. So about half of the FBI fell under me, and I was, just for context, I was fourth on the FBI's food chain. When most men his age would be playing golf or fishing, enjoying retirement, Mr. Mason is driving a school bus. I've done some important things, but guess what? This is important too. He was watching CBS 6 this morning recently when he heard Chesterfield County was in desperate need of school bus drivers. When the pandemic struck, Rob, there were so many people that were doing so many extra things. People like you who still have to get out here. People like grocery workers, people like telecommunications workers, all kinds of folks who still had to do their job. And I felt like I could be doing something to help in this post-pandemic recovery. 
Chesterfield County was so impressed with his commitment to community that they featured him in this YouTube video. He's just hoping to be an inspiration for others to get involved. Doing whatever they can do. I, I believe if all of us gave a little something, wow, how we could impact this world, how, how we could change this world. But in changing the world, Mr. Mason is going to do it right. I'm probably one of the few bus drivers who has uh, turtle wax in his kit back there because my hood was so oxidized, I said, oh, no, I can't do that. <laughs> so, so I am what I am. What he is is a new bus driver building community, building better minds. James Price loves walking with his daughter, Jayana, in downtown Richmond. It's a freedom he doesn't take for granted. He admits mistakes put him behind bars for a while. And that's where everything kind of took off. While incarcerated, James wrote a fictional story called The Comeback, I Raised These Streets. It was good enough to win a National Book Award. But this story isn't about James. Finding Myself by Jayana Price, that's me, of course. It's about little Jayana. And that's me, and I'm older. Jayana was inspired by her father to write her own children's book. I don't like meat because it gets stuck in my teeth. I will have to eat if I want dessert for a treat. And she loves to hear people like it. They read my book mostly. They look at the pictures. And my favorite part of my book is the um slide thing. I would say climbing up this ladder, yeah, I might. I must get over my fear of heights, but I'm not even feared of heights anymore. <laughs> it's a book about finding yourself and who you'll become. My mommy putting on makeup, what a beautiful sight to see. She looks like a queen, one day that will be me. And she already knows what her next one will be about. That's going to be about a lesson how to love yourself and mostly a lesson about how you can love yourself, like do things you like to do or something. And do things like piano, like me. Sometimes I mess up, but I just, I just keep doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it and, to, and doing it yeah. until I get it. Everyone makes mistakes. It's what you do to correct the mistakes that matter. A lesson her dad was happy to teach. It definitely makes me feel like the proudest man on earth. This is a story of how I came happy with myself, me, finding me, the end. The end. Thank you. Happy endings building stronger families, and building better minds.